Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Hi. Beg your pardon. Um, just very quickly, things are not going too well for your servant at the moment. I know this will make my deadly enemies happy, but hey, you know what? Uh, if I die, I'm going to go home to be with the Lord. You die, you're going to hell. Sorry to say that, but. My health recently has taken a turn for the worst. Um, this past Monday, which was the 10th, was a really bad day. A really bad day. Um, so that's why I'm a little disheveled. Um, that's why a video has not come, uh, didn't come Monday. Um, Got to recuperate um, and get some rest and recharge and whatnot. So, just so you know that my my health has taken a turn for the worst. And um, we're right now in prayer. Thank you to you, brethren, who are praying um, for us. But I uh, just wanted to, at the outset, say that. That's what's going on. So, if you don't see a video here for, I mean, for a little while, that's why. That's why. Okay. But uh, while being in this condition, like I said, Monday was horrible. <laughs> Monday was a really bad day. A really bad day. A brother, a dearly beloved brother, brought up the fact like, well, you know, Brad, this could be a spiritual attack because of the videos that the Lord had you to do on witnessing. And I'll give him that's, that's a possibility. But um, uh, nonetheless, while in this condition... It's my heart. I have a bad heart. And speaking can be laborious sometimes. And, um, and because of that, you know, because of that is one of the reasons why a uh, video hadn't been uploaded for you know, a couple of days, except for today, because um, this is something that, something that needs to be addressed. Well, in this condition of weakness, been doing a lot of reading, a lot of reading of scripture, of course, but also I started to read a book that I've had for a while, this book, okay? This is The Secret History of the Oxford Movement. The Oxford mo uh, Movement had something to do with Oxford University, I think, in England, and the gist of it was these coadjutors who were working for the Vatican basically wanted to sneak in Catholic doctrines to bring uh, the people of England back under the headship of Rome, pretty much. That's the gist of the Oxford movement. That's the gist of it. Um, like I said, I'm not very well versed in it, but I just started reading this, and there was something in this book that just absolutely, when I read it, it's like, wow. Esoteric and exoteric. Esoteric means a secret, hidden teaching that is there taught only for the initiated or the elect, while the exoteric is what is given for the general populace, okay? That you see a lot in Freemasonry, and also you see that within the Roman Catholic Church, Satan's Church, which runs Freemasonry. But also you see this this esoteric and exoteric mentality and a lot of what is called Christianity. Giving you an example. Those devils at the Shepherd's Chapel. Okay? If you have heard of them, I'm sorry. If not, stay away from them. Um, they teach the serpent seed doctrine that uh, Eve lay with Satan and uh, Cain was the son of Satan. They also teach a form of um, British Hebrew Israelitism. Uh, the tribes went to England. They're, they're all messed up. They're all messed up. But that guy, uh, Arnold Murray, I believe his name was, he did a confusing, wicked teaching on what the Mark of the Beast was. Now, you can find that today here on YouTube. But originally when it was put out, you, in order to get this secret teaching of what the scriptures was actually saying, you had to go to them and pay money 
in order to get that. So the secret teaching that Arnold Murray was teaching on Revelation about the mark of the beast, which is heresy, by the way, by the way, uh, vile heresy, um, it wasn't available for the general populace. In order to get it, you had to give money because it was a secret teaching that wasn't revealed unto all people. Okay? You also see this mentality. Pick your part. You also see this mentality also in the modern Ruckmanites with Pete Ruckman's uh, commentary on the entirety of scripture. Um, someone tries to, unless they get permission, unless they get the permission from the Ruckmanites today, who are bloodthirsty savages, who got, I know that, um, for example, there's an individual from New Zealand, I believe it was, who would upload Ruckman stuff, and then YouTube or the Ruckmanites would find out about it, and then shut his channel down. Okay, they were bloodthirsty savages, but the same principle that the secret teaching from their master, Peter Ruckman, wasn't available to all the public. But in order to, for you to get the wisdom and knowledge of Pete Ruckman, what he taught on the scripture, you had to give them money. It was a secret teaching. It was an esoteric thing, okay? And uh, you see this with, uh, th throughout with a lot of Christianity, okay? A lot of Christianity. And... Some of it, I want to believe, stems from this Oxford movement. But it goes back far, far, far reaching than that. Okay? Far reaching than that. A lot of occultism. Uh, Freemasonry, uh, uh, like um, what Manly Palmer Hall talked about. You know, you have to be one of the initiated to get this secret teaching. Okay? Is that how it was with God? Today in this dispensation, is that how it is? No, no. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in, my, in your authorized version of the scriptures to 2 Peter chapter 1. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along. Check me out, okay? Pick your part. Pick your part. This isn't going to be that long of a video, okay? But I just, I just want to touch on this. Uh, first, uh, Second Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost... The Lord is that spirit. The Holy Ghost is our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Father. Okay? One God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So, private interpretation. That is something that Catholicism teaches with their private interpretation. Also, of course, Freemasonry. Like I said, Serpent Seed Doctrine Teaching, Shepherd's Chapel. And also, the modern Ruckmanites also have this esoteric and exoteric mentality, okay? All right? And that in and of itself is very wicked. Very, very wicked, okay? Uh, because if you come to the Lord on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, having contrition, godly sorrow, because it's your fault that he died and went to the cross, okay? We went to the cross and died and shed his blood, okay? And in fear of him, you call upon his name and he saves you. He seals you with himself, that seal of the, that seal, the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that spirit, okay? And with the Lord in you, John chapter 16, John chapter 16, okay? John chapter 16, verses 13, on to verse 14. John 16, 13, and 14. Okay? How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, and the Lord is that Spirit, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. And also, 
Psalm 119 Mem. Psalm 119 Mem. When you read Psalm 119, by the way, most sets of scriptures have these. You see that? Where it says Mem right there, you see that? Most sets of the authorized version of the scriptures have that. When it comes to Psalm 119, for yourself, learn how to identify and to associate yourself within Psalm 119 by the heading there for the brackets which, which contain therein, okay? Learn how to um, read and learn of Psalm 119 in that way. It will be very helpful for you. But Psalm 119 Mem, okay? And that Mem is verses 97 onto verse 104, okay? And you got to remember, this is written under the dispensation of the law, which was faith and works, okay? you got to remember that. But this is our instruction in righteousness. Oh, how love I thy law, it is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. For thy testimonies are my meditation. This tells us that these teachers that is being talked about in Psalm 119 Mem, what is it implying? That the teachers did not what? Did not meditate upon the scriptures. Okay? And you're going to see a part of this in this, just in the beginning. This starts out with a smack in the face, I'll tell you. Here's the book. You can get it on Amazon. Okay? But you're going to see this. Okay? That these teachers, scripture isn't their final authority. Uh... The Catholics, they brazenly tell you that Scripture is not their final authority. They are the true Pharisee. A Pharisee is someone who takes tradition and puts tradition above Scripture. That what a, that's what a Pharisee is. Okay. But see, in verse 99, I have more understanding than all my teachers. For thy testimonies are my meditation. What that is telling us is that these teachers that are being referenced didn't have the Scriptures as their meditation. Okay? I understand more than the ancients. Why? Because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained, refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Okay, it's W. Written word. Okay? I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. Who teaches you? You can learn from man, but see, that person who is of God, who has the Lord within him, okay, they speak to you the scriptures, and the spirit identifies. If you are saved, born again, and converted of the church of the living God, I who have the Lord within me, speaking to you his word, I am prophesying to you today. How so? I'm speaking to you the truth of scripture through the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit. Okay, and because the Lord in me is speaking to you through the scriptures, the, the Lord in you is going to identify with what is being said in the scripture. The spirit will identify, okay? Yes, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. And this was in a dispensation when this was written, where the Holy Ghost was not a permanent resident. Today, you come to the Lord on his terms, and he saves you. The Lord is a permanent resident in you, and he will lead you, guide you into all truth. Okay? Okay? How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Every false way. You have to remember, brethren, you have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? This dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay, where we Gentiles were grafted into the tree of the Jew. That's the mystery of the gospel that Paul talks about in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 6. Read that on your own time, okay? That's the mystery, that us Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the 
Jew. Okay? And in this dispensation, okay, we are to speak the truth on to everyone whom the Lord will send us on to. Okay? For on that very quickly, go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. See, under the law, under the law, if someone wanted to be right with God, they had to go to the Jew and be and learn the ways of the Jew under the law. Okay? They had to become Judaizers. Okay? That's how it was under the law. All right? You wanted to be right with God under the law, you had to go to their to the Jew. The Hebraic people, the Hebraic people take the Hebraic people taken out of Shem, okay? Taken out of Shem. The Hebrew, the true Hebraic people, uh, their genealogy descends of Shem, okay? Shem, not Ham or Japheth, okay? But in order to be right with God under the law, you had to go to the Jews, the Hebraic people who were the custodians of of the law because remember salvation is of the Jew today it's different okay because the Jews were offered the kingdom of heaven Jesus Christ ruling and reigning on the throne at Jerusalem they rejected that okay he died buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures shed his blood on the cross and in his death burial and resurrection that brought in this dispensation which is by grace through faith unto everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? All right? But Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, verses 19 on to verse 21, okay? Paul was speaking, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the laying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have shewed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, Greeks, non-Jews, non-Hebraic people, Gentiles, okay? Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 17. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I proposed to come on to you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks, which are Gentiles, and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. Debtors. You might be saying, well, we don't owe the lost world anything. You're right, we don't. But see, we who are saved, we have an obligation to be a walking, living testimony unto the lost people. We talked about this and the uh, three step, uh, three parts of witnessing, which will be in the description box, okay? We talk about this, okay, in depth. But see, we who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay? We, we're saved. We're going to heaven. We know the truth. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And because we are saved, we have an obligation to live our lives according to the scriptures and to be witnesses on to the lost. And in any situation that the Lord will orchestrate for us, to be a testimony and witness unto whomsoever, no matter who, to the Jew or the Gentile, okay? It doesn't matter, all right? There is none of this esoteric and exoteric thing, okay? No. Okay, and we read about how Paul kept nothing back that was profitable. Okay, let's continue. So, because we know the truth, and they don't, it is incumbent upon us, not at gunpoint, not at gunpoint, but it is incumbent upon us to share 
what has been given unto us. Freely we have received, freely we give. Okay? Freely we give. All right? Let's continue here in Romans. <laughs> Fifth, verse 15. So as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith, and what God was going to do under the Old Testament, to faith, into onto what God has done, it is finished. We talked about this at length before, okay? As it is written, the just shall live by faith, okay? All right? Now, remember what we read in Acts chapter 20, okay? How Paul said in verse 20, how I kept back, how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter, uh, is it 2? No, 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 no. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, excuse me. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Good works. And we, we talked about this in the previous videos of last week, okay? Okay, we've already addressed this. But see, what is profitable unto the lost is for them to hear what the Scripture says is pertinent for our salvation within this dispensation to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile, okay? All right? What is profitable? The totality of Scripture. Okay? Now, there are things that you don't write away. Okay? And here is a loophole where these devils will kind of play with. Okay? If someone, uh, you know, you don't take, in your witnessing, you don't take the Scripture and cram it down someone's throat. You give them morsels, bread, little pieces, little by little. But, okay, you do not withhold that which is necessary for them uh, that pertains unto their salvation. You don't have this mentality, well, they're not worthy. They're not one of the elect or non-elect. No, no, no. If you look at it, none of us are, is worthy. None of us is worthy. No. No, but you're gentle. You don't cram the scripture down someone's throat in the first meeting. That's You don't do that. You're gentle, giving them morsels bit by bit. But you do not withhold because of this esoteric elect and this exoteric, the general populace, non-elect. You don't withhold truth from someone because of that. No. No, 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 no. And with that, okay, with that, I'm going to read you. I, I just started this yesterday. And um, so I have not got far about it. Uh, like I said, you can look up the Oxford movement on your own, okay? I'm going to re read you some things that, uh, that just shouted out at me about this, okay? And you have to be weary of this, brethren, and very cautious, Okay, someone who lives of the gospel. Okay, scripture talks about this in both 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay, those who preach the gospel can live of the gospel. Okay, but when you got someone who's teaching something but that is necessary or something that they say that the scripture is teaching secretly, but you got to pay me in order to find out what the scripture is actually saying. Beware of that. Beware of that. That's someone who's making merchandise of you. Okay? So I'm going to read this to you. Okay? I'm going to read this, the highlighted stuff. Okay? Pause this and read it. Okay? And this goes on to this page. Right here to the top where my finger is, 
Okay, we're going to read the highlighted stuff on this page. Pause it and read it. Okay. We're going to also look at some other things in this, but get a load of this. Okay. Get a load of this. The esoteric elect and non-elect, the in-crown, the initiated kind of thing, and the general populace, general public kind of thing, for those who aren't in the know, when it comes to our salvation, especially within this dispensation, you don't withhold truth. You do not withhold truth. Now, if someone doesn't want to hear the truth, that's a different story. But, e but first, you give them the truth. And whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, okay? The late Cardinal Newman, the first leader of the Tractarians, has stated in his Apologia that he ever that he ever considered and kept July 14th, 1833 as the start of the Tractarian movement. Within three months from that date, he published his work on the Arians of the 4th century in which the Disciplina, Disciplina Arcani or the Secret teaching, which found such favor with a few of the early fathers, was held up to the administration, admiration of English churchmen of the 19th century. It was most appropriate that a religious movement in which secrecy has played so important a part should be inaugurated by the publication of such a work. In order to know what God knows, you gotta buy the catechism. You gotta buy the books by Thomas Aquinas. You gotta buy their stuff. You gotta go to a Jesuit priest. In order to know what the King James Bible is actually saying, you ought to, you gotta get what Peter Ruckman said, his commentaries, but you gotta pay a heavy price, and God forbid. Someone share that teaching publicly without their permission, psh, they shut you down. Bloodthirsty savages, these modern uh, Ruckmanites. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Secret teaching. Secret teaching. Yeah. You're saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God. You have the spirit of truth. <laughs> to hell with your secret teaching. Okay? All right. It was most appropriate that a religious movement in which secrecy had played so important a part should be inaugur inaugurated by the publication of such a work. It has served as a seed from which many a noxious weed has grown. Excuse me, I had a seed. A uh, seed, excuse me, a sneeze. Closely connected with the dis disciplina Disciplina archai is what is termed the economical mode of teaching and arguing. The difference between the the difference between the two is thus defined by Newman himself. Okay. If he writes, it is necessary to contrast the two with each other. The one may be considered as with holding the truth and the other as setting it out to advantage. Turning your authorized version of the scriptures to Jude verse 16. Jude verse 16. Okay. Jude verse 16 because remember Jude does not have chapters. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Because of advantage. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And also um, in Second Peter, Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two. 
2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 3. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. These are people who see, who do this for a living, and just a living, because they desire filthy lucre. Mammon is their God. Okay? While yes, those who live of the gospel, yes, yes, but there's a difference between living of the gospel and living off the gospel. Big difference. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness, covetousness, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. And also while we're here, verses 18 and 19. While they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. Okay? Okay? Oh, excuse me, uh, 18 and 19. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, that those that were clean escape from them who live in error. See, I, you learn this secret teaching. See, this isn't available for everybody. See, you're special. You're one of the elect. You're one of the initiated. This isn't available for everybody. Here, you give me this and you give me a little money, I'll tell you what the scriptures is really saying. Buy my book so you can really know what the scriptures are saying, right? Well, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption. And your money is going to perish with you. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought in bondage. Okay? Well, let's continue with this. Let's continue with this. Okay, the Alexandrian father, he confirms Alexandria, Egypt, oh boy, red flag there, who has already been quoted, accurately describes the rules which should guide the Christian in speaking and writing economically for the exoteric, for the, for the non-initiated being fully persuaded of the omnipresence of God, says Clement, and ashamed to come short of the truth, he is satisfied with the approval of God and of his own conscience. Whatever is in his mind is also on his tongue towards those who are fit recipient. What is a fit recipient? Well, we're all sinners, right? Yes, we are, truly. Yes, we are. But who is a fit recipient to hear the truth of the gospel? Those who are lost, going to hell, who are dead in their trespasses and sins. But see, what he says, fit recipients. Oh, what is he talking about? Someone who is of the initiated, the upper class, the upper echelon, the esoteric. That's what he's talking about. Okay? Those who are within a clique, high above everybody else. Both in speaking and living, he har harmonizes his profession with his thoughts. He both, he both thinks and speaks the truth, except, get a load of this, when careful treatment is necessary, and then as a physician, for the good of his patients, he will, capital letters, lie. Or rather, utter a lie as the sophists, sophistry, sophists say. Nothing, however, but his neighbor's good will lead him to do this. He gives himself up for the church. And what church is this talking about? The body of Christ? Church of the living God? No, the Roman Catholic Church. So, it's okay to lie? It's okay to lie? Huh? Romans chapter, Romans chapter 3? It's okay to lie, huh? It's okay to lie. 
You go, well, they're not part of the initiated. Yeah, they're, they, they're, they're Christian, but they're not of the upper echelons. You got to watch out for this stuff, brethren, because the closer we get to the redemption of the purchased possession, this kind of stuff is flourishing right now. Truth being withheld in order for people to line their pocketbooks and to build up barns greater, right? Uh, Romans chapter 3, uh, uh, or is it Romans chapter 2? Uh, one second, I got to find this. Okay. I'm sorry, I was looking right at it. Romans chapter 3. <clears throat> Romans chapter 3, verses 4 on to verse 6. God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak of as a man. God forbid, for, how, for then how shall God judge the world? Verse 7. Verse 7 and 8, excuse me. For if the truth of God hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather... And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come, whose damnation is just. So, according to this, this teaching of, well, what is the secret teaching, but what is this? I believe this is Latin. Disciplina Arcanae, the secret teaching. Yeah. And now, note this. Note this. It is worthy of note that Newman affirmed that these secret doctrines were not learnt from the scriptures. Such as Christmas. That's Someone, uh, you know, we've talked about that, but hey, it's not in the scriptures. The, the teaching of the, what is it, the ascension of Mary, transubstantiation, okay? Those kind of things. They're not based off of the scriptures. They're, tra they're, tra they're the traditions of men. Let me read that again. It is worthy of note that Newman affirmed that these secret doctrines were not learnt from the scriptures. Now first he writes, it may be asked, how was any secret practice of secrecy practicable seeing that the scriptures were open to everyone who chose to consult them? It may startle those who are but acquainted with the popular writings of this day. Yet I believe the most accurate consideration of the subject will lead us to acquiesce in the statement as a general truth that the doctrines and questions, i.e. the secret doctrines of the early church, have never been learnt merely from Scripture, but from the tradition of men. Yeah, and you see that kind of stuff going on today, brethren. You see that kind of stuff going on today, okay? Now, uh, there was some more here um, about these people who infiltrate, but yet teach Catholic doctrines. Perfect example, Stephen Anderson, okay? Stephen Anderson and his... New IFB. He teaches Catholic doctrine, such as uh, that Christian, well, that the Church of God is going to be going through the time of Jacob's trouble. Christians are going to be going through the Great Tribulation, absolutely. But that the uh, 
Church of the living God, the body of Christ is going through the time of Jacob's trouble. We are not. We get redeemed before the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, it is a Catholic doctrine, okay, to number one, be anti-dispensational, anti-rightly dividing the word of truth, which Stephen Anderson and his people are. And also to be against the redemption of the purchased possession, like Stephen Anderson is. Mark the messenger, he's teaching Catholic doctrine, okay? He's teaching the law for today, okay? He teaches against the redemption of the purchased possession. He teaches against once saved, always saved, okay? Because it's a presumption, okay? Mark the messenger is a closet. He teaches popery. He teaches pap uh, papal doctrine. Veiled. He teaches that elect and non-elect thing. Okay? Another good example. All right? But, see, that's a sure sign of a coadjutor. When someone comes in calling themselves a king, king Bible-believing Christian, they claim to be dispensational. But they say it's by grace through uh, uh, it's by grace through faith from Revelation on from Genesis on to Revelation from beginning to end. No, 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 no. They're against the redemption of the purchased possession. Okay, that the body of Christ goes through the time of Jacob's trouble. Some of them once are against once saved, one always saved. To be against the truth of Scripture like that is to be uh, might as well be a papist. Okay? Okay? And there are many who worm their way in. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we, 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 read the, we all read the same Bible. Uh, yeah, but uh, not very few actually believe the scriptures. Okay? But I want to read this to you. Okay? Right here. The, uh, right here. Okay? Pause that and read it. Okay? <laughs> Here a truly Jesuitical spirit manifests itself. Amen. With the esoteric and exoteric mentality. These gentlemen would no doubt be considerably annoyed were they connected with this private society, which made, no, made known to their present congregations. It may, however, be fairly asked, why should they, in secret, be members of a high church society while in public they profess to be evangelicals? Let them be consistent. And if they do not hold the high church views, withdraw from such an organization. I do not assert that these gentlemen are insincere. <laughs> yeah. A lot of these guys are sincere in the wrong way, yeah, but for we cannot read the secret thoughts of others. But until they cease to be members, I cannot help wondering whether they are acting on the ritualistic principle of reserve in communicating religious knowledge. Don't tell them all things because they're not fit to know that you know what they do they they will misuse matthew chapter 7 matthew chapter 7 one verse verse 6 okay matthew chapter 7 matthew chapter 7 which is the sermon on the mount which is the doctrine for the kingdom of heaven when jesus christ is ruling and reigning on the throne in jerusalem okay okay you with me so, doctrinally, the Sermon on the Mount does not apply for us today. Instruction and in righteousness, yes. Doctrinally, no. But here's what they will do. Uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, males, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, females, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and rent again and rend you. So see, they will come to that and say, well, see, 
that shows that we are not to, supposed to communicate all truth. You don't, like I said, you don't take the scriptures and cram it down their throat uh, at the first meeting. No, you be gentle. But you do not withhold the truth of the gospel from anyone. Only after you have given it to them and they do exactly this. Turn and rend you. Okay? All right? And you got to also remember, too, in context, this is talking about how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Today, you preach the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, withholding truth from no one. Okay? And, and go to uh, 2, Peter chapter two, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2 again, because some of you is like, uh, might be offended. It's like, well, dog is a man and a swine is a female. What are you talking about? You're offended? Uh, yeah, you're offended. Yeah, take offense. Yeah, take offense in a gate. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. Verses 21 and 22. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is returned to his male, own vomit again, and the sow, and the sow that was washed to her female, wallowing in the mire. Okay? So, today, when you, you present the gospel, you do not withhold truth from someone because they are to hear the truth. But you go, so here's a great example in Ezekiel chapter 2. Ezekiel chapter 2. Now this is under this another dispensation, yes, but this, this, this drives it home. This drives it home, okay? This drives it home. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 5 on to verse 7. Verses 5 on to verse 7. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. Remember, this is under the dispensation of the law. We're looking at this for our instruction in righteousness. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dwell, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, Though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. They are most rebellious. Whether they will hear or whether they will not hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Okay? You can't go to Matthew chapter 7 to skirt your responsibility for living according to the scriptures as a living witness and testimony unto the lost, and from skirting responsibility for knowing the truth and speaking it unto others. Now remember, like we addressed in the previous three videos, you're not held at gunpoint to do this. Okay? You've got to make the right choice. But we are debtors in the sense that we know the truth, and the truth is Jesus Christ, and we have been called to be his ambassadors to to show the lost. And if they reject that, what does Paul do? Shake off the, the, the dust under your feet and go on to the next one. They are accountable. They've heard the truth and rejected. They're a child of disobedience. Okay? But this idea, this idea that to reserve in communication religious knowledge as pertinent to salvation, No, that's heresy, that's sin, that's wicked, okay, that's wicked, okay, and also, also, uh, let's see, let's see, is there anything else that, uh, yes, right here, this is where I read up to uh, yesterday. I'm going to read the, some of the highlighted stuff here. Pause it and read it. Pause it and read it. Okay? Check this out. All right. 
Where is this? Okay. We look back to a time when Catholic truth and worship were in a condition almost resembling that of the Church of the Catacombs when the utmost reserve was thought necessary, even in speaking of simple facts of the creed. Creed, yeah. The Gorham case and the intrusion of the schismatical hierarchy, hierarchy of Rome with the anti-Catholic animus to which they gave force were still hanging over us. And what was done for the truth was mostly done in a corner. The subtlety of a Jesuit could not have invented a more ingenious, ingenious scheme. Amen. Amen. I know not that the Popish, I know not that the Popish controversy may not just be the very best way of handling ultra-Protestantism, i.e. neglecting it. Not advancing against it, but settling Catholic views against Roman Catholicism and so disposing of ultra-Protestantism Protestantism by a side wind and teaching people Catholicism without their suspecting. Teaching people Catholicism. Uh, to preach once saved, always saved in this dispensation, which the scriptures teach. Catholicism says that's the sin of presumption. Mark the messenger says, I never believed in once saved, always saved. It wasn't in my spirit because he has the spirit of a devil. To preach against the redemption of the purchased possession, which is, which is for this dispensation. The scriptures teach, no. What does the Catholic teach? That the Christian is going to go through the great tribulation. That all of Scripture pertains to you doctrinally today, from uh, Genesis on to Revelation, not rightly dividing the word of truth, when the Scriptures command, command us, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To preach against that, Catholic doctrines. Do you realize that there are people out there who claim to be King James Bible believers, who are ritualistic in certain aspects, are teaching you Catholic doctrines under the guise of King James Bible believing Christians. Are you aware of that? But others in these buildings, okay? And ecumenicalism. Okay, not being separate other than, but to mingle yourselves in in order to uh, win the law, be like the lost to win the lost. Contrary to scripture. Yes, and teaching people Catholicism without their suspecting, while they are only bent on demolishing Romanism, I suspect we might thus have people with us instead of against us, and that they might find themselves Catholics before they were aware. Yes. And this whole idea, this whole principle of this esoteric and exoteric mentality, which is here, uh, which is in Christianity, <laughs> but also among them who claim to truly be saved and of the church of the living God. We need to watch out for this, brethren. We need to be aware of this. No prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. You got someone coming to you, say, well, if you really want to know the deeper things of scripture, you, you need to buy my book, give me a little money. Okay, then I'll teach you the secret things of scripture. Or you, you want to know this certain thing? That, that's, that's for an advanced course. That's for someone advanced. You, you got to go to my seminar and pay me $1,000 a day in order to learn it. Most of the times it's not based on scripture, but the traditions of men. We got to be careful, brethren. 
we got to be careful and be aware of this. That's why you need to be in the scriptures daily. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so, so that you may be able to spot when someone who comes to you who claims to be a brother, but yet they're teaching Catholic doctrines. And in order to know the false, you need to first know the truth. How they spotted counterfeit uh, dollar bills in time past, they would study the real thing. So when they came to the false, they would be able to spot it immediately. Hence, same principle. You study the authorized version of Scripture. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. He leads you and guides you. Okay? So that is going to be it for this little video, brethren. Thank you to those of you who have been praying for us both, uh, for my health and for what's going on here. Um, this isn't over yet, unfortunately, but uh, please do keep us in your prayers. Pray for one another. You know, visit the sick. Well, I can't visit them. Call them, email them, talk with them. Do whatever you got to do. Be there for one another and pray for one another. Thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. Next week, we'll probably have got some really good things that the Lord has been showing me. Next week will probably be uh, a, a, another video. Got to get things in order here. But um, yeah, be careful of these things, brethren. Be careful of these things, okay? Anyway, I love you. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you, brethren. Bye-bye.